Jordi here for Cinecom.net and welcome to my tutorial. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a lower third title within Premiere Pro. So let's open up the example project right here and already you can see what the design looks like that we are going to create. Now let me also show you the animation that we're going to create as well. Hello, my name is Kim. It's cold outside, but the sun is shining, so that calls for a bike ride. All right, that looks great. Now you can already download this project file and you can find a link to it within the description. But let's get started so I can explain you how I have actually created this. So right here you can find the actual clip of Kim saying that she's excited for the bike ride. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this within this small icon right here. This is the new item box. And when I drag that into that box, you will see that a new sequence has been created and that that clip is inside that sequence right here. So now let's create a title. For that, I'm going to head back to that new item button, click on it and say title. And I'm going to name this title one or zero one. Then just press okay and that will open up the title designer of Premiere Pro. Now let's get started with designing our lower thirds title. Now you can design anything you want in here because the idea will be exactly the same, but I'm just going to create the thing from the example. So we've got this rectangle right here. This is the first one. And I'm going to give this rectangle a certain color. I'm going to head right here to the color of that rectangle. And I'm going to give it some kind of a dark bluish color like this, press okay. And I'm going to create the exact same uh, rectangle again. So again, take the rectangle tool and I'm going to drag a new rectangle over it, something like this. And I'm going to head back to the color now, but I'm going to make this a little bit lighter. Maybe change the U a little bit like that. There we go, that looks good. It's maybe a little bit too high here. I'm just going to adjust the rectangle something around this. So what we have now is actually some kind of a shadow from the rectangle that is laying on top, but I'm not creating a shadow from the title properties. As you can see, you can do that right here because I'm going to need each element separately. That means this right here is an element and that right here is an element. You will see later in this tutorial why that is. All right, let's continue designing this uh, lower third. I'm going to take the type tool and I'm going to type in here, Kim, Awesome, there we go. And uh, I'm just going to select everything in here because I'm gonna change the color to white. There we go. Also, I'm going to also change the font to Ariel because that is something we all have. So if you download the project, it won't have any problems with finding the um, font. Also, I'm going to set Kim into a bold style. There we go. So we've got Kim Awesome now. I'm just going to lay that on top of this rectangle here, this blue rectangle. Maybe decrease the size a little bit like that. Also make sure that we have some room for the logo that is going to appear right here. That can be your company logo or the client or anything like that. There we go. And now finally we're going to add the logo in. Now the logo that you see from the example or saw from the example uh, is not something that we've created within here. It's something that I've designed within Photoshop. And we can actually import that file right here inside the title designer. For that, just right click in an empty space, then head over to graphic and say insert graphic. Click on that and that will allow you to browse through your computer. And on my desktop right here, I've got a folder of footage and right in there you can find logo.png. I'm just going to select open and there we go. It's inside the title designer now. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller like that so that it actually fits within the blue rectangle. This looks okay. Maybe move it a little bit down. There we go. So we are now ready. We have designed the lower third. Now we would like to animate this as well. Now for that, we actually want to have each element, so that is the title, this rectangle, the other one right here, and the logo, in a separate title file. Now here's a trick on how you can easily do that. I'm going to close the titler, and I'm going to grab the title that I have right here, and I'm actually going to duplicate it. So I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to say copy, right click in an empty space, and say paste. And I'm going to do that as much as there are elements within. And I had four elements, as you remember, which is the title, the two rectangles, and the logo. 
Next, I actually want to rename all of these title files. So we've got 01, we've got 02, and now I'm just going to make this 03, and finally 04. And right now, I'm actually just going to open up each of these title files, and I'm going to remove all the elements except for one. So in the first title file, I'm just going to remove the, this rectangle right here. I'm going to remove the text. Oops, the text. There we go. Come on, the text. There we go. And the logo. I'm just going to close this. And in the second title file, I'm going to delete the title, the shadow, because we already have that one in the first title and the logo. Close the titler again and open up the third title. Now this time I'm going to delete two rectangles and the logo. So we only have the text. And finally, I'm going to delete everything but the logo like that. And again, close the titler. Now I'm just going to add everything to my timeline. So one goes here, two goes on top because these are now separate layers. So you have to see this as in Photoshop. And finally, number four. So right now you can actually see that your lower thirds looks again exactly the same as you have originally designed it. But since we have every element now separately, we can start animating these. So let's start with the second one right here, because this is the uh, blue uh, rectangle, which has a text on top of it. And we're going to animate that so that it will come in from the left to the right. So for that, select that clip, head over to the effect controls tab. If you can't see this, head over to window and select effect controls right here. Then within that, you will find motion. Open that up and right here, you can find the property position. And that's the one that we're going to animate. Now, currently, the title is already at the ending stage. So I'm actually going to create a keyframe with the value of the ending position. For that, just enable position with this button right here, toggle animation, and we've got that keyframe right now. This keyframe holds the value of the current position. And I'm going to move this forward in time because it's actually going to be the ending position. And then next now, I'm going to create the first or the starting position. And for that, I'm going to change the value. So I'm just going to move this like that. And you can also see that visually right in here that the position is changing now. And I'm just going to move that outside of the screen. So right now, this keyframe holds the current position. And remember that the other keyframe was the ending position or the previous one. So if I'm going to play this right now, you will see that this rectangle will actually animate or will come in from the left. There we go. So it already looks great. Now, if you want this rectangle to come in slower or faster, you can move the space between these two keyframes, as you can see. Of course, the closer that they are together, the faster that the rectangle will come in. And the next thing that I want to animate is the shade that you can see below it. For that, I'm going to align my play hatch to the last keyframe, like so. And at this point, the shade can actually come in. So I'm going to select number one, which is the other rectangle, the, uh, the more darker rectangle. I'm going to open up the motion again. And what I'm going to do now again is create a keyframe for the position. This is going to be the ending position. And I've got that keyframe right now, but I'm going to move that a little bit to the right side because that is going to be point number B or the ending position, as I've said before. And what I can do now is actually click on motion and that will allow me to visually or to grab this rectangle within the program monitor and just move that to a different position. So something right here so that it's actually behind that rectangle. And if I play this right now, you will actually see that the animation does its job very well. But we do have a small problem here. Since the shadow rectangle is actually behind the uh, lighter rectangle or the rectangle that has a text on it, it will also appear now when the other rectangle is still coming in. So we're actually going to cut that a little bit here. So at the point here when the uh, lighter blue rectangle is at its maximum or at the final position, we are going to let that other rectangle come in. So I'm just going to drag that a little smaller right here. There we go, as you can see. So right now, if I'm going to head back to the beginning, you won't see that darker rectangle because it hasn't started actually yet. We have cut it off a piece from the beginning. So now it will look pretty awesome. There we go. And now it's time to animate the logo. So for that, I'm going to select number three or was it four? Yes, it was four. So number four holds the logo. Let's start animating that one. 
Again, the same thing, open up the motion, create a keyframe for the position, and again, move that a little bit to the right, move the logo outside of the screen, maybe move these a little bit closer to each other, and play it, and this looks great. And now we can already start animating the last one, which is Kim Awesome, or the title of your subject. Now we're not going to do that with the position this time, but I'm actually going to add a new effect to it. For that, head over to your effects library right here and search for the crop. Right here within transform, you can find crop. Drag that over to your text layer and now we are going to animate one of these properties right here. Now, if we select crop, we can actually visually change that again within the program monitor. So right here, I'm just going to take the outsides and if I'm going to drag that to the left, you will see what happens to the title, it crops it. So I'm going to head back in time where the logo starts coming in, somewhere right here, and I'm going to align that crop with the logo like that. And that is the right property, so create a keyframe for it. And now we're actually going to move one frame forward. You can do that by pressing on the arrow keys on your keyboard. There we go. We're one frame forward now, and now we take the right crop guideline again and drag that a little bit open so that it aligns with the logo. Again, one frame forward and align it again. One frame forward and align it again. And just keep on doing this. It'll go quickly, as you can see, until the logo is at its very ends. There we go. And now you can see that we have created tons of keyframes right in here that actually recorded the path of what we've just done, as you can see in the example. So right now, guys, if I'm going to play this, you will see that we have created the animation in for the lower third title. But now let's create also the animation out. Now you might think, oh, do we have to create all these keyframes again? Well, of course not. I have a great trick on how to avoid that. What I'm first going to do is select all of these clips and make them a little bit shorter in time because we're actually going to double this afterwards for the animation out. Now I'm just going to right click on all of these four clips, select it, and I'm going to choose for nest. And I can name the nested sequence because what I'm actually doing here is taking all of these clips and group them within a new sequence. So I'm going to name this one here lower thirds and press OK. So right here, this is the animation in of the title that we have designed. But if we are going to double click on it, it will actually open up that sequence. And right in here, you can find the source or all the title files that we have just created. But let's go back to our sequence because we're going to create the animation out now. And to do that, just copy that nested sequence, right click on it, say copy, and move your play out now to the end of that uh, sequence, this nested sequence. Make sure that you have selected the second video track as the output and disable the output for uh, video track number one because that is what holds the clip. And now just head over to edit and say paste. There we go. And now we actually just have a duplication of that same sequence. So that just means the title will actually come in twice. The first one and the second one. So the only thing we have to do is just turn the other one around. And we can do that by right clicking on it, head over to speed slash duration, and just say reverse speed. Press OK. And if we are going to play this now, you will see the animation coming in. And after that, the animation will just reverse itself again, and we have an animation out. So guys, that is how you can create a lower third title within Premiere Pro. Now you can design anything in there that you want, the idea will always be the same. Just design it at first, and after that, make sure that each element of your design is in a separate title file so that you can animate those layers separately. Thank you very much for watching. Again, you can download this project file and you can find a link to it within the description below. Also, don't forget to check out our website, cinecom.net, where you can find more tutorials, premium courses, and free designer packs to download. See you folks soon.